So, um, of course, without a further ado, I would like to start uh, introducing with uh, our first guest speaker, uh, who, of course, doesn't need an introduction. Uh, but I'm really happy to start with uh, Omar Madra and make him like, uh, or getting to know him through this journey. Uh, Omar Bey is one of the most inspiring uh, intellectuals living in Turkey. And we are really lucky to have him in this, in this country. And uh, this photo was taken from yesterday's uh, climate change uh, strike. And he was leading it, one of the leading voices. And one of the most popular thing about him, alongside it is uh, social activism and Açık Radio, is that he doesn't have, or he doesn't use smartphones still. But the funny thing is, he's quite reachable. He's quite open. He's quite well connected and he's on the streets fighting with young generations and he's still, uh, he's always there, you know, he's always there for us if we need him. Uh, after resigning from his first job uh, at the university in 1982 for ethical reasons, he worked as a journalist, editor, translator, writer, and uh, in 1994, he founded um, Ochik Radio, which is an independent uh, radio channel, which is also quite rare, as you can imagine, not in, only in Turkey, but in the world. So he is uh, still editor in chief and a programmer of this radio, and uh, which is which had celebrated 25th uh, uh, broadcast year, I think last year. Uh, so he's uh, still producer of one of the most popular programs called Open Newspaper, Light Green for the Sake of the Climate, Climate Emergency, Chronicles During the Pandemics. And uh, Chic Radio uh, had really great and unique influence on cultural agenda of Turkey uh, for over 20 years with its uh, diverse programmers, diverse um, off the agenda topics and inclusive uh, point of view. So, uh, yeah, I'm giving you Omar Madra. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much for the nice words. Uh, I'm flabbergasted, <laughs> really. Uh, I was there, yes. Uh, there were actually hundreds of uh, thousands, or even millions, took to the streets worldwide for uprooting the system climate strikes yesterday and in uh, Kadıköy Pier uh, one of them was, was there actually other places like Ankara uh, Tekirdağ and others took place and in Istanbul it was uh, quite great after two years of uh, solitude uh, one and a half years of solitude because of the pandemics and it was very nice to see the crowds with great uh, sort of uh, courage and also hope, I should say. Now, when we say hope, uh, I think uh, I think uh, it's uh, I have to repeat one of the slogans of both the Extinction Rebellion movement in, in the world uh, and al also of uh, Greta Thunberg uh, is that uh, hope does not come from outside to our insides. And uh, actually when hope dies, uh, starts the real action. And as the leading thinker, as one of the world's leading thinkers, the Pulitzer Award winner, Chris Hedges wrote, hope has a cost. It is not comfortable or easy. It, it requires personal risk. It is not about the right attitude. Hope is not about peace of mind. Hope is action, actually. Hope is doing something. 
which uh, we just saw these youngsters and all kinds of people all around the world doing action, acting, radical action. The, the, the name of the uh, hashtag is called uh, uprooting the system. It is a very radical and systematic uh, demand, actually. Uh, and uh, as if I may go on with Mr. Hedges a bit more, the, the more futile, the more useless, the more irrelevant and incomprehensible an act of rebellion is, the vaster and more potent hope becomes. Hope ne actually, hope never makes sense, which I certainly agree. Hope is weak, unorganized, and absurd. Hope, which is always nonviolent, exposes in its powerlessness the lies, the fraud, and coercion employed by the state. Hope knows that an injustice visited on our neighbor is an injustice visited on all of us. Hope posits that people are drawn to the good by the good. This is the secret of hope's power. Hope demands for others what we demand for ourselves. Hope does not separate us from them. Hope sees in our enemy our own face. That's what Chris Hedges wrote some time ago. Now, uh, as I've uh, said, young people by the hundreds of thousands and even millions took to the streets across the globe, uh, globe yesterday to deliver a resounding message to world leaders. Climate crisis is getting worse and only radical action will be enough to avert catastrophe and secure a just, sustainable future for all. As emissions, emissions and inequalities increase, we rise up and demand climate justice. From Turkey to Pakistan to Italy to Germany and to the Philippines, the worldwide uproot the system actions mark the largest climate demonstrations since the coronavirus pandemics forced campaigners to take their protests online last year. Climate activists in developing countries where access, access to vaccines is limited due to artificial supply constraints and hoarding by rich nations were still forced to limit the size of the dem demonstrations Friday as a public health precaution. Uh, let me quote from the Common Dreams uh, website. Uh, Yusuf Baluch, a 17-year-old activist from the Pakistani province of Balochistan, told Reuters that in the global north, people are get, getting vaccinated, so they might be out in huge quantities. But in the global south, we are still limited. And the Swedish activist Greta Thunberg, who happens to be a great inspiration for both myself and very many of our listeners of Vachik Radio, whose solitary sit-down strike outside her home country's parliament in 2018, which we started covering at, at, at almost a week later, and st we still do, this helped spark the Global Fridays for Future movement. She said yesterday uh, there was a tremendous crowd in Germany, as ex expected, just before the elections. Uh, she said there, she said that it has been a very strange year and the health with this pandemic, but of course the climate crisis has not disappeared. It is the opposite. It is even more urgent now than it was before, said Thunberg or Thunberg in Swedish, uh, who on Friday 
yesterday joined a large demonstration in Berlin. And uh, as you may re remember very well that uh, Germany and was hammered by a massive climate uh, linked floods in July, the worst they have experienced ever. Now, uh, if, you, if you permit me, I'd like to follow on, uh, follow a bit her words, uh, which takes about seven minutes or so. I, I'll try to read the uh, lines um, under, underneath the lines. She says, today we are striking all over the world, not the least here in Germany and Berlin, uh, under the hashtag uproot the system because that's what we want to do. That was a huge applause at that time. And it's been a really turbulent last year in the health uh, where we have been reminded of how vulnerable we are, but we have also been reminded of how fast things can change and be turned completely upside down. In some parts of the world, we have experienced what it is like to truly treat an emergency like an emergency and to change social norms that I find extremely significant, changing the social norms. Otherwise, we won't be, nothing will happen. And, but while all this has happened, she says, of course, the climate crisis hasn't disappeared and we have not disappeared the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The CO2 in the atmosphere hasn't been this high for at least 3 million years, which is, which is horrific. Uh, and 2020, uh, 2020 was tied with 2016 with the 2016 the hottest year ever recorded do i make myself heard is there a problem no it's perfect okay uh, uh to to 2020 was tied with the 2016 the hottest year ever recorded And recently, we have seen extreme weather events rage all around the world and taking many lives, not the least here in Germany, she says. And if there, I, I believe there were around two, something like 200 people who lost their homes and everything and their lives too. And uh, this pandemic has shown us it is that the climate crisis has never once been treated like an emergency, as she always says, uh, Ms. Thunberry. Thunberry. And uh, it is clearer than ever that no political party is do doing close to enough, but it's even worse than that. And let me add that uh, that is not valid, uh, Ms. Thunberg's, Thunberg's uh, remarks not only are not only valid for uh, Germany, of course, but to almost all the almost all the countries in the world, as, and I must cite uh, Turkey as well. And uh, it's even worse than that. Not even their proposed commitments she says in Germany, uh, are close to being aligned with what would be needed to fulfill the Paris Agreement. Uh, as an example, if you look at the different parties, climate policies and compare that to the carbon dioxide budgets, which is simply science. I mean, she's not, uh, these are not opinions even. These are just scientific realities uh, provided by the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that will keep us below 1.5 degrees centigrade 
you can see that there's a huge gap. Not one party is even close to even proposing a pathway that will be consistent with the Paris Agreement. Uh, and yes, voting is essential, she says, Greta, but alone, it is not enough if we want to ensure a safe presence and future on planet Earth, we need to be active democratic citizens, which I'm, I, let me underline it once more, please, if you mind, if you don't mind. This is a huge, very small and also huge demand of radical democracy. If we need to be, we need to be active democratic citizens and go out on the streets. It is the streets that matter. I have been in the streets since 1965. I should say, and my mom, mother, late mother used to call me, my son, it's getting late, go into house. Well, I can't, mommy. I'm a, street boy. Anyway, uh, Greta Thunberg says the same, and we need to be active democratic citizens and go out on the streets. And like we are doing today, she says, to a large, great applause in Germany, we need to, be, we need to become climate activists and demand real change. Because remember, change is now not only possible, it is also urgently necessary. It's a, not a matter of choice, really. I mean, it is, it's a must, as she very explicitly declares. And But when enough people, this is probably a, one of the most important points in her, in her whole speech of yesterday in Germany, when enough people demand change, then change will come. A change is gonna come as Sam Cooke once signed. Then change will come on. Election day or any other day. And that's why we have to continue fighting for as long as it takes. That's why we have to continue fighting. The climate crisis is an accumulative crisis. The carbon dioxide we emit now will be up in the atmosphere for up to a millennia, 1,000 years. It's just as much about our present as and future emissions as it is about our future historic emissions. And that's why we need to have historic emissions in mind when we ensure climate justice. And while we're at it, Germany is the fourth biggest emitter of all carbon dioxide in history, which nobody seems to care about really. And when we look at uh, Turkey, let me see, and you know, the Carbon Brief website declares it uh, very scientifically. Turkey is a major economy which straddles Europe and Asia. It is the world's 20th largest emitter of greenhouse gases. GHGs. So I mean, it's not a not only a problem of Germany or any other countries, but especially to the global south, of course, who contribute very little and are devastated by the consequences of it. Anyway, if we continue with Greta. Uh, uh, fourth, uh, being the fourth emitter, fourth greatest emitter, is for a nation of about 80 million people, which is about the same amount in Turkey. 
that's quite an achievement, she says very coolly, as always. And Germany is objectively one of the biggest climate villains, he says, although uh, uh, the departing Chancelier Merkel is considered a very green personality, which is a great lie, actually. Uh, everybody should know it. She, she made some changes with the nuclear power centers and so on, but how about the coal, the humbuck, humbuck forest, which took to the lives of even uh, one, at least one activist there. Well, that's why Germany is one of the, objectively, one of the biggest climate villains. And we are not only stealing the future from our children and grandchildren, she says, Greta Thunberg, Thunberg also stealing the present from the most affected people in in, uh, in the world, I mean, in areas. Those who are already suffering the consequences of the early stages of the climate and ecological crises, and those who have contributed to this crisis the least. These are called the MAPA areas. And now, as we move out of the pandemic, Many are talking about using this as an opportunity for a green, sustainable recovery, whatever that means. And world leaders are talking about building back better, promising green investments, and setting vague and distant climate targets in order to say that they are taking climate action however the fact that we are in a crisis that we cannot build buy or invest our way out of it this seems to create some kind of collective mental short circuit among the people in power among the people in power collective mental short circuit sharp humor has and the longer they pretend that we can solve the climate crisis within today's system the more invaluable time we will lose but even if we ignore the fact that when you look at we are actually investing the money in the money that's supposed to be building back better, it shows the hypocrisy. That's also, that's also a key expression, hypocrisy. All the world seems to be suffering from that mental illness, so to say, if we can say it. It shows the hypocrisy of our leaders it turns out that the green recovery they are talking about isn't so green after all. If you look, just look at the numbers, you can see what she's talking about very clearly. I can see it very clearly, as John Nash once said, once sang. After all, only 2% of government's recovery spending has been allocated to clean energy, according to International IEA, International Energy Association of Nuclear Agency, International Energy Agency, who is led by a Turkish personality. Uh, and 2021 is currently projected to experience the second highest emission rise, second highest emission rise ever. 
If that's not hypocrisy, what is, I wonder. And according to a new report by the UN, the global emissions, and here please brace yourselves, the global emissions are expected to rise by 16% by 2030. In 10 years time, even nine years time, the emissions will rise by 16%. This is suicide and murder both. I say that, Greta didn't say it. Uh, compared to 2010 levels. Yes, you heard that right, she said. There's nothing wrong with your ears. Time and time again, the people in power show their true interests and priorities. And it is not an overstatement to say that they simply don't seem to give a damn about us. We can no longer leave this to the people in power to take care of. Applause. And lastly, she's talking, yes, we must vote. You must vote. It's uh, election time in Germany. And they're undecided. 50% of the people are undecided which party to give their votes to. Uh, you must vote, but remember, that voting only will not be enough. We must keep going into the streets once, um, to the streets once more. Gentlemen or gentlewoman, women. We must keep going into the streets and we must keep demanding our leaders to take real climate action. We must never give up there is no going back now but we can still turn this around people are ready for change we want change we want change we demand change and we are the change That is the speech I tried to convey to you yesterday by Greta Thunberg, where uh, one of the, some of the biggest uh, walks and talks in, uh, they, they were made in Germany as expected, but uh, Turkey, Istanbul, the peers, uh, Kadikir peers was quite all right too. I mean, at least a thousand people were, were there and mostly youngsters, very creative posters and some of which you, you have been shown by Miss Atalan and uh, so uh, the hope uh, I, I finish where I started when hope dies, action begins. Uh, and as Robert Swan once said, or Robert Swan OBE uh, is a great explorer who were who have walked who has walked to both the poles and he became a very act great activist after these two ex explorations. As he says, uh, the greatest threat to the planet is the belief that someone else is going to save us.
Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you so much for listening.